Hello, and welcome to a video about the fundamentals of pause buffering in Celeste. So I realized that there wasn't really any centralized source of information regarding how to learn pause buffering, how to good at po get good at pause buffering in this game. And it's a really, really useful tech. There's definitely a lot of potential for it. It's relatively new, so there's surely going to be more stuff labbed for it as time goes on. I've already contributed a lot of that to my uh, to a lot of the labbing myself, and I hope that through making a video like this, more people will be exposed to it and more open to learning it or find an easier time using it themselves in whatever way they'd like to. So I'll get right into it from here then. Pause buffering, first of all, is just pausing the game to do very precise inputs one frame at a time. So for example, here in 5b, we have bubstrop right over here. And bubstrop, before pause buffering, what you had to do was you had to buffer a jump through the transition and release that jump within the first two frames that Madeline started moving on the other end of the transition up here. So I failed it right there because I'm not very good at it this way. But you had to do a very tiny jump there. Failed it again, yeah. So it's honestly kind of hard that way. You can get good at it. I'm just personally not good at it because I don't practice it that way. With pause buffering, you can just forcibly play the game one frame at a time and make it look like a complete breeze if you have practice with it here, because you're just forcing the game to go one frame at a time. And it can be nice and easy like that with practice. So now to actually get into how to learn pause buffering here. I'm going to start off with talking about how to buffer inputs in general. If you're already familiar with buffering inputs, I should have some timestamps in the description that you can just go click and jump ahead to the next bit of what I'm talking about. Um, but for those of you who aren't necessarily familiar with what buffering an input means, to buffer an input is to press it before it can happen so that it happens the moment it can. And to be to give an example for that, if I am not on the ground, obviously I can't jump. So if like I'm midair, I can't jump from here. I can only jump when I'm on the ground. As I'm falling to the ground, in some games, you might have to wait till the exact moment you have hit the ground before you can press jump. Otherwise, it might just not happen. Like, you might have to wait. Uh, in Celeste, though, up to five frames before you actually hit the ground, or before you can actually do any other input, you can press and hold the button, and it will happen the moment that it's able to happen. So, just as a quick example here, I'm just going to be hopping and pressing and holding jump from midair before I actually touch the ground here. Oops, a little, a little too early there. But what I'm doing here is I'm buffering my jump. I'm pressing it early before I've actually hit the ground, and it happens the moment I do hit the ground. And you can do that with any input in the game. So one thing that it's really useful for is dashes. Let's say that I was, for some reason, let's just pretend that whatever movement I have has me falling from up here down below to the platform beneath me. If I buffer a dash for the moment I land here, I can immediately be going into my next movement of like a wave dash or an extended hyper or whatever, like that. Because the dash can would happen the instant I hit the ground. It's basically making it so that I do it as fast as possible like that. So you can kind of see that I'm not even getting like the white transition hair color or red hair color of Madeline getting her dash back just because it's buffered. It's happening so immediately that that isn't even happening yet. So that's what buffering inputs is like. You can do that with any input, and you can also do it through screen transitions. So if I'm walking through a screen transition, I can buffer my input right before the screen transition ends, and I can get it immediately. So like I'm buffering jump here, getting my jump immediately through the transition. I can also do it with a dash. Both would work there. Uh, yeah, that should be everything about buffering, buffering inputs. Very, very useful. Highly recommend just practicing trying to buffer things. Okay, so for the next thing in learning pause buffering, there is frame advancing. So if you start from a pause, what uh, you might notice when you unpause is that there's this moment that in time where the pause menu has gone away, but the game hasn't quite resumed yet. It's really short. It's like 10 frames long. This just window of dead time where you're unpaused and you're just waiting for the game to resume. Um, so in that time or in that window right there, that's when you're able to buffer inputs out of a pause. So just like I'm kind of buffering through a screen transition where it's from a dead moment and then I'm suddenly exploding into jump right here, I can do that same sort of thing out of an unpause where I unpause and I buffer my jump. It'll happen the moment that the game resumes here. 
Um, so we can also do that with pauses if we're wanting to frame advance. So if I want to the game to just go one frame at a time here, I can just unpause and then immediately buffer my pause again like this. So I'm just getting repeated pauses here over and over where I'm only advancing the game one frame at a time. You can see how slowly Madeline's just kind of crawling along there. Um, and that's frame advancing along the ground. You can also do it from midair if you're trying to find some very specific height cue for a demo or something. So a place that that comes up is in the heart room in resort B-side over here. If I'm doing this strat right here, I'm too high, but I know that there's a specific visual cue I can frame advance to right here. Where if I have frame advance to right here, I can just unpause and buffer a demo, and I get that demo right through there every single time. So that's one thing that frame advancing is really useful for. It can make stuff like this, which is a frame perfect demo. If you're not pausing, it's really, really tight. It's 0.017 of a second to hit that. But if you're using pause buffering, it's like way, way, way more lenient. It makes stuff like that a lot easier. It loses a little bit of time, of course, but the safety is totally worth it because you're still going to save time on average for a lot of stuff like that. Okay, so that's frame advancing and buffering inputs out of a pause. Now, if we're going to talk about bubs drop here, you kind of have to do both of those at the same time. You need, first of all, you need to buffer a pause through the transition here. So let's just buffer an input through a transition. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to unpause and buffer both a jump, so buffer the jump out of the unpause, and another pause. So if you do both of those things there, and you got the timing correctly, you made it so that Madeline has done just a single frame of jump off the wall here, and also got another pause. So during this pause here, I can just let go of jump, unpause, and it works. Bob drop. I won. Got the death, got the death warp over here. Saved my 25 seconds, or whatever amount of time it is. Uh, so that is that's how to be buffering inputs and like a, a repause at the same time there. You can just do them at pretty much the same timing window there. If it's jumps, that is. Now, if we're going to get into more complicated stuff, we can start to talk about buffering pause and or buffering like a dash and a pause. And the reason that that gets a little bit more complicated is because if you're trying to buffer both a dash and a pause, the dash is going to have some freeze frames, so when the dash happens, and it'll happen first, you're going to get some freeze frames before you're actually going to be able to pause again. So let me just explain how that works in detail here. I'm going to start out paused, and let's just say I want to unpause and then buffer my dash. When the dash starts, every dash in the game has four freeze frames before they actually start uh, resuming the game again. So like it's it might be hard to notice, but Madeline kind of hangs whenever you do a dash. One way that you might be able to tell is if you're walking along the ground and then you just buffer, or if you just press a dash as you're walking along the ground, she kind of stops for a split second before you see the dash happen. That's a good way to notice. Um, that, yeah, that's how to notice that those freeze frames exist there. But the way that they work in uh, with regards to pause buffering here, is if I unpause and try to buffer dash and pause at the same time, it's probably not going to work because for the frame windows here, like I said earlier, every input in the game has a five frame window for buffering it, um, except pauses. It's six frames, but it's just a little weird, weird bit of 1.4 that we don't really need to pay much attention to. So yeah, normally, normal circumstances, that five and six frame, that's just about the same. You can press things pretty much at the exact same moment and it'll work as you intend to. However, with your dashes that you're trying to buffer the dash and a repause, when you press dash, you're going to have those four freeze frames appear before the game allows you to pause. So that means you have to unpause, buffer dash, and buffer a late repause on purpose because you have to be pressing at those four-ish frames later than your muscle memory is used to doing if you've gotten the muscle memory for just normal things like a uh, like a pause buffered or frame advanced with a jump so it's going to be different muscle memory if you're ever going to be trying to buffer dashes and repauses there um, and yeah that can be useful for stuff like trying to get instant hypers here so i can get a hyper started here so i've gotten it so i'm in the very beginning of the dash pose like the dash state that madeline has here and then 
I got that bit, so then I can just do like that, and I got a one frame jump on a hyper. So that was get the dash, and like one frame jump on a hyper. If you need to do very specific stuff like that sometimes. And that would be about it for the fundamentals of pause buffering. After this, this is just some miscellaneous stuff that I'm going to talk about here for a little while. One of the more, most important things I would say out of the miscellaneous sort of stuff there is regarding pause buffering is while you're paused, if you hold down your button bound to journal, you make this pause menu go away. So if you have any visual cues you're going to be trying to look for, the game's still paused here, but I can make it go away by holding journal. And if you're not sure where your journal button is, you can just head into your keyboard or controller bindings and scroll down to journal in the menu section here just to figure that out. And if you'll just hold that while paused, you can see visual cues a lot more clearly this way. Now, something that people like to use for some pause buffering is a pause jump button. And I used to think that pause jump buttons were bad. There was, I thought there was some frame perfect mistake you could make where you press it too early so that you get a pause, but you don't get the jump. And then you just kind of mess yourself up that way. Made it seem like it wasn't worth it to me. That's not true at all. I, I accidentally spread that misinformation for a while. I'm just kind of clearing that up here. A pause jump button is pretty much the ideal way to buffer something like the pause and jump for bubs drop. If you're specifically wanting to get like this sequ sequence of action right here, where you've unpaused and buffered a jump and a repause, then having a pause jump button is perfect for that in every single circumstance. So something like a second block list over here, if you're going to pause buffer a second block list, oh, oops, if you're going to pause buffer a second block list here, for this bit down here where you're needing the two frames of jump, using the that bind would work just fine for this. Um, or if you're going to be doing it for Bub's drop, it would work perfectly fine for this jump right there as well. So anything like that, a pause plus jump button is totally perfect for. There are literally no downsides to using it aside from maybe the slightest bit of muscle memory regarding manual pause buffering versus just using a, a single button like that. Okay, then I just have one last thing that I wanted to talk about that I feel is really important with pause buffering, and it's being able to use it for understanding strats or labbing out strats and figuring out what frame windows you might have for certain things. So there was this really difficult thing that my friend Tio was doing in the second last room of Golden Ridge B-side here. Um, let me just get up there. So what he was doing was he was doing this turnaround right here where you skip the bubble right there in the middle of the screen. He's doing this turnaround, and it felt really hard to me, and it only saved like 0.15, so I'm like, this doesn't seem worth it. I can't get good at this. Um, and as it turns out, yeah, it is pretty hard, because I went ahead and I pause buffered it, just like this, just frame advanced and tested. Hmm, is this frame gonna work? No. Okay, let's try, okay, so that's the same frame I was just on. Let's go one more. Let's try that. Oh, that works fine. And then you can just kind of repeat that process. Here, so let me just get back to where I was. So this was the first one that worked, and this one also works. And then this is the one after that. So that's three frames, so that works, okay. So that was one, two, three, and this would be frame four. Frame four doesn't. Okay, so that means what I just checked there is I just checked the very specific window that this strat has by just frame advancing here. And there are all sorts of way that you can ways that you can uh, figure stuff out like that just with pause buffering, as and it just serves as a really useful tool for trying to figure out your strats, or even just taking some strats that you have difficulty with, and intentionally finding a pause buffer for them that might make it easier for you. I honestly really encourage that. In my any percent run, I do like seven pause buffers, and of those pause buffers. I believe at least half of them, if not like five or five or six out of the seven-ish, are just for time loss. They they are meant to make it whatever whatever thing I'm doing safer, and it loses time. Uh, but I still had got like a really really good any percent time despite that. So I absolutely recommend using pause buffering in whatever way you find comfortable. And yeah, that should about do it for the video here. If you have any comments or anything 
that you feel I missed regarding pause buffering that would be worth mentioning, please bring it up in the comments. And yeah, I just want to continue the conversation about pause buffering. If you have any questions, feel free to check out the Celeste Discord's uh, speedrun help channel, or even just ask me to rest directly if it's about pause buffering. I'm a big fan of trying to figure out stuff like that. Thanks for watching and see ya.